97.3 HD3 Millville. All crimes were committed by the other side. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. President Trump just tweeted that, repeating his mantra, the greatest witch hunt of all time. This says the House plans to vote to allow the Judiciary Committee to go to court if necessary to enforce subpoenas on Attorney General Barr and former White House Counsel Don McGahn. But House Democrats did get some of what they wanted. The Justice Department agreeing to turn over some of the underlying evidence from the Mueller investigation, including files used to determine whether or not the president obstructed justice. We have a responsibility to do this work. In return for the files, Chairman Nadler says Democrats will hold off on a vote to hold Attorney General Barr in contempt of Congress. That's Fox's Lauren Blanchard, a Republican congressman who sided with Democrats believing the president committed impeachable offenses. Justin Amash has left the Freedom Caucus, a group of conservatives in the House. Missouri's only abortion clinic will stay open for now by court order as the state reviews safety concerns at the clinic and what critics say is an attempt to shut it down. Missouri recently joined several states severely restricting or banning abortions. Maine is going the opposite direction. Fox's Tanya J. Powers has more live. Dave, Maine Governor Janet Mills, a Democrat, signed a bill yesterday that allows medical professionals who are not doctors to perform abortions. Now nurse practitioners, physician assistants, and certified nurse midwives can also perform them. California has a similar law, too. Now, critics of the expansion say they're concerned that some non-doctors lack the training to handle rare complications from abortion procedures. Dave. Tanya Ron has set free a U.S. permanent resident who's been jailed there since 2015, convicted as a spy. Lebanon secured Nazar Zaka's release at a time of increased tension between the U.S. and Iran. A sheriff's deputy's in critical condition in Los Angeles County, shot in the head at a jack-in-the-box restaurant. You know, the guy was just there on the ground, blood everywhere. He was off duty, not in uniform. The gunman walked away, then drove off. This is Fox News. All money managers might seem the same, but while some give their clients cookie-cutter portfolios... Fisher Investments tailors portfolios to your goals and needs. Some only call when they have something to sell. Fisher calls regularly, so you stay informed. And while some advisors are happy to earn commissions whether you do well or not, Fisher Investments fees are structured so we do better when you do better. In other words, we're on your side. Maybe that's why most of our clients come from other money managers. So if you're in or nearing retirement, talk with us and find out why investors are switching to and staying with Fisher Investments. Fisher Investments. Clearly better money management. Investments in securities involve the risk of loss. Visit us at FisherInvestments.com to find out what we can do for you. Rain wraps up for South Jersey early this morning. Then we've got some good sunshine ahead. It is going to get a bit windy. Northwest gusts to 30 miles an hour expected. High temperature today around 79 degrees. A few clouds tonight. It will be calmer and much more comfortable. Low of 56. Increasing clouds tomorrow and a bit cooler. High of 72. We get wet again on Thursday. Periods of rain heavy at times. High of 76. 78 with sunshine and a stiff breeze on Friday. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dan Zarrow on W. PG Talk Radio 95.5. From Harry Hurley Way in the world's playground to the broadcast pioneers of Philadelphia Hall of Fame. I want to congratulate my friend, Harry Hurley. You're about to find out why Harry Hurley has been named to the Talkers Magazine list of the 100 most important talk show hosts in the nation. Live from the studios of Town Square Media in Northfield, it's Hurley in the Morning on WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Exactly four minutes past the hour. Thanks for waking up early in the morning. The following program is presented by Chuck Malamut, a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley. The information, views, and opinions expressed are those of Chuck. Do not necessarily reflect those of Morgan Stanley or its affiliates. They are current as of the date of this broadcast. They are subject to change without notice. Neither the information provided nor any opinion expressed herein constitutes a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. This presentation is for informational purposes only. Chuck Malamut, welcome to your program. Good morning, Harry Kirk. Paul Rotello, good morning. What a crew. What I a, know. 18. What, <laughs> it's hard to follow up this this team. That's for darn sure. But I'm looking forward to your, very kiddingly, we kind of said your, one of your many awards this Thank year. You. But seriously speaking, congratulations. I know your listeners, I don't know if they can see me smiling through the mic, but we are very, Thank very you, proud of you, Harry. Thank so you, Chuck. 
Thanks for your support. Um, come a long way, my friend. The question is, what do you do for the next 25 years? Well, you saw, you did read the article on Radio Inc. Uh, it was very briefly. kind. When you get a chance, please read it. And the neat thing about it is Paul Rotella received a phone call. They wanted, they wanted to uh, uh, reach me, and I was in the car driving to New York. I was a passenger in the car, so I wouldn't have done the interview as a driver. Uh, and gr- they gave me a great interview. They, they gave us a really nice story. And we talked about, I thought you read the piece because we, he asked, how long are you going to continue? So I talked a little bit about uh, that's not always up to me because there has to be a radio station that believes that you should be on the air. But that for my part in this, I said that I feel like I've hit about halftime. Now, the Fox News producer that we worked with yesterday and we'll be working with today said it was his favorite line. I, I put that I'll be 59 years old uh, later this month and that I feel I feel like I'm about I've hit the halftime mark. <laughs> he thought that was hysterical. In other words, like I'm going to live to be 118. But I meant in terms of so my how about career. we get you to about 101. How's that? Sound? I'll take it. You'll take that. We'll take so, it. All right. Sixty five percent. That's OK. Well, well yeah. Well, so, well, 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 yeah, we don't want to be guilty, especially well. with a guy that's as good with numbers as you are <laughs> of uh, fudging with the uh, with the math. Chuck, what is your market update? So, it was interesting last week, as you know, I was on travel, and uh, we, we came off of a, a, the, the week before, which was just awful, as we ended May, uh, probably one of the worst Mays that we have seen in a, in a decade plus, and the markets were off anywhere from 5 to 7%. But even having said that, um, you know, the markets were still up, you know, double digits, you know, 12, 15, 18% roughly. We'll get that in, into a minute, but or so, but... It was just so interesting. Now, we always talk about political risks and geopolitical risks. And the fact of the matter is now we are in a quiet period with respect to the markets. I mean, all companies are, are have, have virtually reported quarterly earnings. I mean, you're going to see, you know, an occasional one or two uh, that, that are not on that traditional cycle. But what about you said quiet, but yet, and I, I'm not challenging you because you're our expert and I believe you, but the Dow did pick up hundreds and hundreds right, of points. Right, right, but here's what happened. So now the market right now is not trading traditionally on fundamentals. We're sitting here, we're waiting for, you know, for the next quarter for, for Q2, and Q2, uh, you know, is going to end, uh, you know, not for, you know, Another month, and and you think about it. So we're not another month. We're we're, ha- we're we're through the end of June, and then it takes anywhere from ten to fifteen days to start reporting second quarter. So you know we're a month out before we're going to start to see second quarter earnings. And as a, a lot of strategists, including um, our strategist at Morgan Stanley, is you know you know actually quite negative with respect to quarterly earnings and the earnings that we're going to put in before the end of the year, but. And what I'm trying to say in a, in, a, in a long-winded way here is that the market is now trading on the next story, the next press conference, the next news release, the next tweet. The next trade uh, conflict. And as a result of that, a, a lot – imagine trying to trade this market and you uh, made a decision – at the end of May, that he said, "Look, I'm going to I'm going to lock in my gains here for the year, and I'll take that six percent loss, and I'm okay with that because I still, you know, have relatively good gains for the year." And then you flip the page until June the first, and literally, what happens? I mean, the markets have had just some spectacular days uh, from the end of May, and, and and you know, you listen to the technicians, and they talk about double bottoms and. The fact of the matter is that in, in spite of everything that's going on, uh, we, we have, we're still rolling through some pretty good times, and we'll kind of get to that as we get through our hour today. But think about last week all to itself, the S&P was up 4.5%. So if you liquidated your securities at the end of May, you would have you missed that. The biggest weekly gain we've seen since this past November, um, there was a lot of short covering, and you could see it coming as – as the you know the index is ramped up, you it wasn't just buy volume; it was covering. You know, people that went short, or institutions and hedge funds, and they went short during the month of May. You know, 
when they see these they see this rally coming, they have to cover. And when you when you cover, what happens is you ultimately end up. Um, Oh, hold on. I got a I got a robo call coming in here. Harry. Well, that's very important. I'll put your mic on hold so you can take that uh, telemarketer call. They want to uh, sell you. Uh, uh, what is that thing called? A Floby. Uh, you hook it onto your hair dryer uh, or your vacuum cleaner and it cuts your hair. It is. Insane. It's a Floby. Yeah, salesperson. Well, I, I need to get about 10 of those. So, yeah. So in, in, in any case, <laughs> got completely distracted. Right. I apologize. Nah, so nah. so what? what What's happening here, you know, that, that first week of, of June, um, you know, was, was, you know, spectacular for the markets. And as I mentioned, short covering, and you could see that coming. And when these, when these averages move, and the Dow in particular, when you're moving 50, 75, 100 points at a clip, uh, that is not n- new money, new buy money. It, it, is, it is short covering. And because everybody kind of piles on, and they said, oh, my goodness, we got to cover. And then... You hit those stops, and then all of a sudden, you know, the market moves, you know, up, you know, very, very quickly. And I think we saw that the other day. And, you know, um, like it or not, you know, Chairman Powell, and we'll get into this a little bit, uh, you know, is very, very dovish with respect to the, to the markets and saying, well, you know, we're going to take this sort of one day at a time. And He's talking more and more about lowering interest rates. Well, there's been – it has changed dramatically in the last 90 days. We're now – we are expecting multiple rate cuts before the end of this year with the mo- with the next the first rate cut happening not june but probably in in the july meeting and all indications are that they'll probably signal that as we get into um as we get through the june meeting as you would expect you know the higher risk you know sectors technology materials uh industrials they they outperformed last week in the uh, the uh, more the, the safer, more defensive, the REITs, the tel- telecommunications, and utilities; those particular sectors lagged uh, compared to the rest of the market. But you know, having said all that, you know, uh, and I mentioned this to you to you before. Um, if we could kind of stop the clock here, I don't think Harry would be too disappointing. I mean, the S and P. Up fifteen point seven percent. The Dow up twelve point seven. The Nasdaq up seventeen point three. And what's very interesting here is, if you remember, you know, as we got through the first four or five months, four or five months of the year, the the number one uh, best performing index globally, international or globally, was the Shanghai, the Chinese market, and it was up upwards of 25 percent well they've given half of that back right now i mean that market right now is up about 13 and a half percent and and i think a lot of it's obviously due you know not, not so much to the rhetoric but the fact of the matter is that that things are in fact slowing down uh, in china as a result of the of, of the tariffs uh and the, the tension is out there and the and it's a matter of like where where do we go from here We're going to get our first break in. When we come back, we're certainly not going to ignore the May jobs numbers because they're the poorest in the entire Trump era. I think it's something like 45,000 jobs, and I might not even be right with that. Uh, But we were expecting more. We got less, maybe not even a third of what was projected. And uh, we'll see what Chuck has to say about this. And does that support the Morgan Stanley uh, research that they're – they're presenting these days about the economy. There are many in the uh, industry that believe that we're going to have a downturn. I don't, I not only don't want to believe that, I want to be guarded and also look out for anybody that's trying to tank our economy because they want to win an election in 2020. It's kind of interesting that we, um, we've had a booming economy and what, just in time to not have one? so that we can forget all about how great things have been and just focus on, uh, and they did it, look, they did it to George H.W. Bush. We were growing at 3.4% GDP, and they made it the worst economy uh, in 50 years, according to the New York Times. We'll see what Chuck has to say. And a reminder for all of your financial planning needs, turn to the official, the exclusive financial advisor for the Hurley in the Morning, Chuck Malamut, 609-383-2010. Chuck will give his analysis on the jobs numbers for May when we come back.
Whether it's sipping a cool drink in the summer sun or getting that extra jolt of caffeine to get you through your workday, we can all agree a coffee break is a perfect addition to your daily routine. And now, in the 1450 Club at WPGTalkRadio.com, we have your chance to win a $50 Wawa gift card or a $100 Starbucks gift card. Coffee's on us this summer. For your chance to win, visit WPGTalkRadio.com. The Auto Plaza and English Creek. Roll with Mr. Tire. This is Harry Hurley, and I'm with the Mayor, Charles Kane, owner and operator of the Auto Plaza at Harbor Township. Mayor, tell your listeners who are looking for a car, why should they choose the Auto Plaza? Harry, it's our full-service department selection and hassle-free financing alternatives that have set us apart for over 17 years. Over the years, we've been the recipient of many sales and service awards, as well as receiving an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. It's been a real honor for us. We are now serving a second generation of sales and service customers. Stop in today. You're going to love our staff and experience what what makes us different. For all of your automobile service parts and sales needs, call the Auto Plaza at 609-646-2447. That's 609-646-2447. And visit us on the World Wide Web at myautoplaza.com. The Auto Plaza and English Creek. Roll with Mr. Tire. Shore Medical Center, the region's leading state-of-the-art surgical pavilion, is now home to Shore Physicians Group Surgeons, a Penn Medicine surgical affiliate with renowned surgeons in the field of general, vascular, plastic, and reconstructive surgery, urological surgery, and neurosurgery, and access to Penn Medicine's world-class academic health system. Shore Physicians Group Surgeons are delivering expert diagnostic and surgical care to people throughout the South Jersey region, with offices at 649 Shore Road in Summers Point, adjacent to Shore Medical Center's $125 million state-of-the-art surgical Pavilion. Shore Physicians Group Surgeons includes some of the region's most prominent pen affiliated surgeons, including General Surgeons David May and John Malilli, General and Vascular Surgeons Leonard Galler and Gary Feinberg, Plastic and Reconstructive Surgeon Mohit Sood, Neurosurgeon Frank Kralik, and Urological Surgeon Meredith Perry. For more information and to make an appointment, visit ShorePhysiciansGroup.com. Shore Physicians Group, surgeons bringing excellence in surgical care close to home. Are you putting your retirement savings in a 401k, IRA, or investment account? Then I have one word of advice. Stop. Many experts warn of a stock market crash any day now. And if it's anything like the last two crashes, you could lose 50% or more of your hard-earned savings in the Wall Street casino. Can you afford to lose half of your retirement savings again? Hey, you don't have to lose a penny because there's a better, safer way to save for retirement. And you can learn all about it in a free report. This is the report Wall Street and big banks desperately hope you never see. Why? Because this method continues to grow your money even when the market tumbles. It lets you take back control of your money and finances and it gives you penalty free access to your savings plus it beats the pants off any 401k or ira these are uncertain times so get the information you need today to guarantee your retirement security to get this free report go to bank right now that's bank on yourself.com bank on yourself.com the choice of a lawyer is an important decision it should not be based solely upon advertising this ad is sponsored by case legal media attention this is an important message for anyone that has been diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers. The Internal Agency for Research on Cancer warned that overexposure to Roundup and other weed killers may increase the risk of developing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Monsanto, the manufacturer of Roundup, may have known that Roundup and other weed killers were likely linked to organ damage and cancer. This information was hidden from the public as proprietary trade secrets since 1981, and Monsanto may have failed to warn of the potential risk of cancer. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call us now at 800-715-5016. Our network of attorneys are ready to fight for you. You'll pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor. Call now for a free consultation at 800-715-5016. You must protect your legal rights. Call 800-715-5016. Again, 800-715-5016. Set the first button on your car radio for South Jersey's talk station. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Hey, thanks very much. 19 minutes past the hour. Thanks for waking up early in the morning on WPG. Kirk, have a wonderful day, Mr. President. Mike Rubel, have a great day. Our president in studio for the entire break. That's always a a privilege. And we were having a great conversation with Chuck 
uh, with Michael, Michael Rubel, the president of Task Force Media Atlantic City. So, Chuck, I, I did a little homework during the break and had a nice little assist from guest listener Bob Progner. Uh, so we did 75,000 jobs in, in May, still well below uh, forecast. Uh, is this a telltale? Is this a <coughs> outlier anomaly? What, what, well, what do you I, think? I think, uh, I think the way you have to look at it, 75,000 was the print, uh, well below expectations. And uh, not only the month of – May, but we also had some negative revisions during the month of March and April. Unemployment still remains at 3.6%. Average hourly earnings, Harry, did edge up slightly. But I think you're starting to see here, you know, and it's like anything else. If you want to get a job, if you want to be employed, chances are still good that you're going to that you're going to find employment uh, however what we're seeing now and this kind of rolls right into the next uh, item I wanted to talk about was one of the weak sec- weakest sectors of, of the economy continues to be manufacturing you know the, the ISM manufacturing surveys have been weak and they they continue in a, in a downward trend um, you know, and, and, and that data that we're seeing only, you know, only reflects slightly the, the disputes that are happening, you know, between U.S. and China with respect to trade. So if, you know, if you were to poll your listeners, you know, people that run businesses and your corporate executives and you were to ask them, you know, what are you doing? You know, what are you, know, what are you doing with your CapEx budget? What are you doing with respect to employment? And and you're going to hear, I think, more times than not. And I'm not, you know, Harry. I'll be, you know, I'll be, other than a seasonal business on on the boardwalk, for instance, mm-hmm. you know, where you have to hire and you know you need people quickly for a relatively short period of time. I think most corporate executives and these large comp- companies right now are basically sitting on their hands, and they're they're not spending the money with capex, and as a result of that. The supply chain is now being somewhat disrupted, and ultimately companies are saying, like, what's the next move? You know, are, are we going to, you know, embark on this this major project, uh, you know, to improve the efficiencies of the company, We're, you know, building widgets or whatever it may be, Harry? But I think what is happening right now, a lot of these companies are saying, we're, you know, we're just going to wait. And, and I and I kind of takes me back to where we started with our strategist, uh, Mike Wilson, being ne- very negative on the markets, or not very, very being negative on the markets, saying that, you know, don't be at all surprised if you see Q second quarter revisions to earnings. You know, a lot of, you know, how they come with these pre-announcements, you know, prior to earnings to sort of forewarn everyone that, hey, we're not going to make our number, and here's the reasons particularly why. So don't be at all. So he's saying, don't be at all surprised if that's happening. And a lot of this is now, you know, uh, as a direct result as to what's happening with trade or or, or or the tariffs, we'll call it, between the U.S. and China. And I think the most recent um, tweet that we saw, or the news release, or uh, announcement was that if the President Trump said if he doesn't get a meeting at the G20. Was she? Then he's going to basically slap more tariffs onto uh, onto China. Correct. So, do you are markets holding their breath that they're meeting in two weeks? I mean, are we in like almost a hyperventilation stage? Which I don't like that. It, it was just very yeah, we un- very. Unf- I, 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 unfortunately, we are yeah, because I don't like they that. know it, and it's it's you know I'm not. Going to, as you know, we don't take this hour and talk about politics, but it, it, the market right now is is basically waiting for the next press release, the next news announcement, the next tweet to come, um, the, you know, whatever it may be, as it relates to trade. And I think what is happening, Harry, you know, something that we thought that was going to be relatively quick and easy. To resolve and 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 basically when when uh, when Mnuchin said you know in the beginning of May that you know we're ninety percent of the way there I mean the markets were were pretty happy about that and then the president came out with his two famous tweets on I guess it was Sunday May fifth if my memory serves me correctly 
and said, no, we're not there. We're not there at all. And then the markets, as you know, the month of May had a sell-off. So flip the page, June is better. Now, the question is, you know, it looks as if, you know, certainly, you know, everything that happened with Mexico and the U.S. happened very quickly, and we can get that, we can get into that in a minute. But I think, and a lot of, um, you know, a lot of economists are basically saying that what's happening with China, Harry, you know, could take quite some time to come to a conclusion, and and ultimately, who pays for this? You know, is, is China really paying for this? Hmm. I mean, did they are. I mean, it's getting more expensive. You know, f- to you know, for them to export and for us to import, obviously. But you know, Harry, you and all of us and your listeners, you, we're all paying for it. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, if it, if it's more expensive to import you know, an, an auto part, for instance, um. I mean, that's, that obviously affects the supply chain. And as that item is imported and passed on to you as the consumer, who's paying for it? Is the company, going to, is the company that's going to import this auto park going to pay for it? Hmm. I mean, maybe slightly. I mean, when, they first, when we first had the initial, um, you know, the initial tariffs that were placed, I think a lot of companies came out and said, okay, look, we can eat this one. This is good. This is okay. It's not going to affect us a lot. It, but now as we're getting these additional tariffs coming, these companies are basically saying, we're not going to absorb these costs. These costs are going to get passed on to you as the consumer. And then markets don't like that. And I, th- I saw an analysis the other day, you know, with great fanfare a year or so ago, you know, all, it was all about the tax cuts. And how, you know, a lot of individuals and corporations were saving. And then I, you know, with re- reduction of federal federal tax, income tax rates. But what I'm seeing now is that uh, if this is true, that with the tariffs in place right now, the average American savings between your tax cuts and the additional costs for the tariffs is $100 per family. So think about it. You were saving what fifteen, eighteen, two thousand dollars a year with these tax cuts. That has gotten basically Gone. S- sucked away from yeah. you with the higher tariffs. With the higher tariffs, yeah. and now you're down to a hundred dollars. Um, so, how does this fit in, though? I know short term it has the impact that it has, but with every good deal that is ultimately achieved, the long term strategy, the future of this type of aggressive strategy has a payback. It's it, To me, remember, we, when it was theory, I think you agreed with, agreed with me when I said short-term pain, long-term gain. To, to accomplish something that's not been accomplished before, and that's improving this, this very significant unfairness imbalance that has been in place, and China wants to be us, so they don't want to give President Trump a victory and look like uh, there are a little runt or something and that, that they caved to the president of the United States that they have huge egos in this, too. But the president is playing a long game here. Strategy. Oh, absolutely. And and I, I, I think that. And so far, you have to say his record's been pretty yeah, I, I impressive. Think, well, I think all of us um, you might have gotten maybe hoodwinked a little bit in, in believing that this would be solved relatively quickly. I never believed that. And. Well, you were the minority. Yeah, okay? I, and I, only on China. I, the other ones were much easier to do. They're not easy, but easier to do. China was going to be the tough one. So now, you know, something that was going to be initially weeks to to come to resolution, we're now into months. Mm-hmm. And think about it. They're not – I think the uh, the meeting – the G20 meeting in Japan is June – in like two June weeks, tw- June twenty, June yeah. thirty. I don't know the exact date, yeah. but right around the corner. You know, we, so now we live to the next meeting, and as and as you said, you know, China is a proud country, yep. and they're not. I don't think they're just going to roll over. Well, they're not going to. They want to be the world superpower, and if they look weak on the world stage, that they folded or acquiesced to the United States of America, this is going to be a very tough deal to get. 
It will be tough. And, and you know, the, the, the good news is that I'll kind of roll in here to what happened. How about right after the break? We can do that. Yep, it's halftime. We'll be back 30 minutes past the hour. This portion of our program is also brought to us by the Closet Factory. And I am pleased to endorse the Closet Factory, and here's why. Let me tell you about a friend. This friend, and it's a couple, husband and wife, they were in a hurry to get ready for a formal affair about a month ago. She had picked out her dress, and when she went to find the shoes, she couldn't find them. And yes, it was those shoes. They're in the closet, but the closet isn't as organized the way that she would like it to be. And the shoes were nowhere to be found. Then her husband found his tuxedo but could not find his tuxedo shirt. So they have all this added stress. They're dressed for business attire to take on the day. And at the end of the day, they don't have time to go home. So they bring the formal wear to then go to the evening's activity. But they can't find all the stuff that they need. And that's where the Closet Factory is here to solve that problem. Their designers and installers are highly trained employees dedicated to providing expert craftsmanship and a stress-free experience. They want you to escape to your home, not from it. And all you have to do, this is a private Hurley in the Morning specific phone number for only Hurley in the Morning listeners. So when that phone rings, they know it's you. They know it's us. 609-385-2040. Dedicated line. 609-385-2040. Or go to their website, closetfactory.com. Tell them Harry sent you, and a reminder, they do much more than just closets, cabinetry, bookcases, entertainment centers, office space, kitchen storage space. Really, the um, the sky's the limit. They will have your space planner, your stylist, your project manager. You'll be very, very pleased. Tell them that I sent you to the Closet Factory. With Chuck, I am. Hurley in the morning, WPG Talk Radio 95.5 FM and 1450 AM. Millions of Americans suffer from pain and are often prescribed opioids to treat their conditions. However, the dangers of misuse, addiction, and overdose have been a growing problem. The CDC states that 46 people die every day from overdoses involving prescription opioids. On June 18th at Linwood Country Club, the Greater Atlantic City Chamber, in partnership with the New Jersey Department of Health, New Jersey Department of Human Services, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield, Enlightened Solutions, Volunteers of America, Atlantic Care, Atlantic County Sheriff's Office, Town Square Media, and the Press of Atlantic City will host an educational luncheon on the opioid epidemic and its impact in the workplace. New Jersey Health Department Commissioner Dr. Sharif El Nahal and a panel of industry experts will discuss how businesses can be a part of the solution. The event is free to all Greater Atlantic City Chamber members and only $35 for non-members. Learn more about the June 18th opioid epidemic event by visiting acchamber.com or by calling 609-345-4524. It's hard to believe. It's summer sales time at Rossi Honda, and you can lease the 2019 Civic LX for only $99 a month. And that's for only 24 months. And don't forget, the oil changes are free up to 60,000 miles or five years. At Rossi Honda, we treat you better, period, for less. On Delcy Drive and Violin, shop us 24-7 at RossiHonda.com. And like us on Facebook. 3195 down. Tax, tag, stock, fees, extra. 24-month lease, 10,000 miles per year to qualify buyers. See dealer for details. Hi, I'm Ron Rossi, and it's summer sales time here at Rossi Honda. You can lease the all-new 2019 Accord LX for only $179 a month. And don't forget, the oil changes are on us up to five years or 60,000 miles. At Rossi Honda, we treat you better, period, for less. On Delcy Drive and Violin. Shop us 24-7 at RossiHonda.com. 3195 down, tax tags, doc fees extra. 36 month lease, 10,000 miles per year to qualify buyer. See dealer for details. Message and data rates may apply. Please do not text and drive. See purple.com for terms and conditions. And now for an important announcement. Do you or does someone you know sweat the bed? Do you ever wake up feeling like you've been sleeping on a slip and slide? Sweating the bed is a serious but common problem that affects your sleep, health, and happiness. Plus, it's just plain gross. But it's not you, it's your mattress. Fortunately, there is a cure. It's called Purple. Purple is the only mattress with a scientifically engineered smart comfort grid. This patented technology is designed to let air flow freely, so you sleep cool. Side effects of sleeping on Purple include sleeping better, feeling better, and, well, honestly, smelling better. 
Try the Purple Mattress risk-free for 100 nights and never sweat the bed again. Now you can pick your own free product with mattress purchase by texting SNORE to 84888. Become a Purple VIP and be the first to know about deals by texting SNORE to 84888. That's S-N-O-R-E to 84888. Brian Kilmeade is next at 10. Now, back to Harry Hurley on WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Thank you very much. 35 minutes past the hour. Chuck Malamud is here. A reminder for all of your financial planning needs. So that means everything, your your retirement planning and college building years. And and if you take care of that with Chuck, you'll be amazed how much stress you can take off of um, the rest of your lifetime if you take care of that. You should get that going when you know you're having a child. And then that's going to be growing all during uh, the formative years. And you'll be positioned to not have this massive student debt that uh, Chuck and I talk about, whether it be Parent PLUS loans or the student loans themselves, which is actually devastating our young adults where they have their degree, but they can't buy a home because their debt to equity ratio is destroyed, if not forever, for for many, many years uh, while you pay off six figures. It's very, very challenging, and it doesn't have to be that way if you put a little bit aside Now, strategically, on a regular basis, through Chuck Malamud and make him your financial advisor, you're going to be in good shape. 609-383-2010. Because remember, you'll be having that grow for 18 years. Then some of it's still growing uh, in years one, two, three, and so on. And Chuck, as we talk about a lot... The college uh, degree is almost a five-year deal now. It is more, yeah, five-plus. It's... um... And that's I'm, the, how, I'm talking how, about for like a how, bachelor's. How do I say this in a nice way, uh, without offending any uh, professionals that, that that work in that environment? It's what a great gig to have, oh, where yeah. you can just continue to raise your prices, and n- no one complains. Nobody I mean, complained you, because the money was made available to pay whatever it would be. There was no debt to equity ratio requirements. Uh, if, if you had every bill that was current, it wouldn't matter if you had been a mess in the past 90 days beyond. But if everything is current at the time, the money came. And so they could charge whatever but, they but wanted. But this might be shifting a little bit because I've, I I read just last week uh, that a, a lot of uh, business schools that offer you know, you know masters and MBAs, they're actually having a, a, a decline – declining number of potential uh, students mm. because of the, the cost. Yeah. And, you know, the fact of the matter is because the labor market is pretty tight right now, you, you, you know, coming out with a four-year degree is uh, enough is, right is, now, is acceptable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you, it might, we did have a, pe- a period where it wasn't. Well, I mean, you when th- the labor market, yeah, was, I mean, you think about, and we'll you know, hopefully get, get into this in a little bit, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, 10 years ago, as you know, it was impossible impossible to get a job but yeah you know one of the things we kind of talked about harry i know you and kirk spend some time in this talking about gdp yep and and w- what we're seeing in the second quarter it looks the, the all indications that we're getting from the, the from the economists on the street are that you know growth rate might be between anywhere between one and two percent um certainly below the initial expectations but I, I think everything we kind of talked about so far and today below much of the past two years makes it makes sense as to why we could get there um now the fed as but you, by the way wasn't last quarter supposed to also be one point something and it, it came wound in, up, it came in higher for yeah. sure but but i'm just saying that you know so much is hinging on on these geopolitical events um, and, and I th- and Wilbur Ross just this morning on on uh, on CNBC said this is going to get worked out. We're we're going to get we're going to get a deal. And um, but we're all all the Americans are saying that now. What the Chinese are saying something different, I think. But so the Fed. By the uh, way, let's go to I want to I want to uh, question one of the uh, items you have on your agenda and see if maybe this is not correct. Trade tensions between U.S. and Mexico isn't that resolved? well? No, it's been. It has. I mean, it but has, it has been. been. It, no know, doubt, there. Ha- the, it had been. You know, they they've been easing, uh, but there's still risks. I okay. mean, it doesn't mean you know because you have a you have a deal. Yeah, that's allegedly. Well, the president that, actually said 
that he leaves open the possibility of implementing tariffs at a later date. So you, that that is correct. You know, the, the problem is that you know so so the president got what what he was looking for. Okay, it's a, it's a near term victory, mm-hmm. uh, political victory for the president, and it's obviously contingent on tougher immigration controls coming from Mexico. But given all the uncertainty ar- around policies that are in place, I think all of us need to remain a little concerned about potential future developments coming, so, coming out. I mean, it's never – how do you say this, Harry? It's never over until, it, until it's over. It's true. It's true. And, and I think that, you know, the good news is that we got a lot accomplished in a relatively short period of time. Are, are, are we going to continue? So this begs the question, what happens with the stock market? Well, look, if I <laughs> – it'd be real easy if, if, if I can tell you and your listeners, you know, here's what's going to happen between now and the end of the year. I, I, I do think that stocks are going to remain somewhat volatile uh, until we see some, some evidence of some stronger economic growth. And that all kind of you – know, you, you know, you think about everything we've talked about and how, how much sense this makes. You know, the market volatility that we've seen, Harry – has been driven by trade and Fed policy, which remains you know, somewhat uncertain. However, I'll get to that in a second. We have seen risks, obviously, in the form of slowing economic growth. And then, as you remember, what happened during the month of May? I mean, bond yields, you know, you know basically, you know, went to 2% on, on the 10-year. I mean, no one was expecting that to happen. And, you know, the, 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 it, it, the question – out there is who's right? Is it the is it the stock market or is it the bond market? Now, as we got into June, rates have reversed somewhat. Rates are now higher, which is actually a good thing. Uh, I don't think you want to have a sub two percent treasury because ten year treasury because that indicates that we do have some serious economic issues in front of us. Um, but having said that, it's going to be a little difficult now for equities to you know to get some sort of momentum, I think, on the upside, unless economic data that we just kind of talked about improves manufacturing and, and, and GDP in, in particular. So. Chuck, I know you touched on this, but I want to make it sort of a standalone point of emphasis. How did we go from a absolute rate hike environment to a rate decrease environment? So, you know, Harry, what happened was that the, the, the data points that were coming across, as, as I mentioned to you before, you know, continued to weaken. And as, as a result of that, um, you know, the Fed basically pivoted. Or, and, or let me rephrase that, is looking to pivot. They haven't done it yet. I mean, but— They're sort of winding up, though. But the- Chairman Powell said, look, in, in a— you know, he said, look, uh, we're going to su- we want to support this economy here. I mean, in spite of all the tweets and, you know, uh, the comments that the president makes, I mean, he's trying to force the hand of the Fed. Um, I mean, they, they are allegedly independent and they have to basically make their own decisions. But l- let's let's look at it. Th- let's look at the what's happened over the time, Harry, with respect to the Fed. Um There have been four rate hike cycles that we've seen over the last 25 years, including the most recent cycle that included nine. We had nine rate hikes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't I think most of your listeners were sort of immune to it because it didn't really impact them that much. But now, I mean, from a saver's perspective, I mean, think about it. Can you make the case they did too much? Well, so here's what's happened. Yeah, I think for sure. I mean, so that's what I was saying at the time. If you remember the last hike. So these rate hikes took about th- three years, middle of December 2018, middle of December 2015 to December of this past year. And the, the last hike that took place was December the 19th, six months ago. So the, the three previous uh, Fed rate cycles where they kind of flipped from the last hike to the first cut ranged anywhere from five to 15 months. So in, two, in 1995, it took five months to do that flip. In January 2001, it was seven and a half months. And the 15 months was in September 2007. So think about this for a second. It took the Fed 15 months in 2000, through 2007 to cut rates 
for the first time. And what happened? What happened after September 2007? After they cut the rates? Well, they started to cut rates. Now, I guess the point I'm trying to make is they were, I think 15 months was a bit long. Yeah. Be, long in the tooth because what happened shortly thereafter is we ended up in the Great Recession. Correct. So the, the question at hand is, you know, five, six, seven months seems to be somewhat reasonable. I mean, economic data changes. It changes all the time. So, you know, they, they didn't do a flip-flop. No. They, they they just had not made any indications that we're going to, you know, steady goes the course, so to speak. And they said, so now we're going to look at potentially cutting rates. And I'm hearing a lot of strategists and economists saying, well, that's not going to solve it. We the, the problems are, you know, deeper than that. But the bottom line is, if you have the Fed on board, I think it's certainly a lot helpful for the economy than the Fed. You know, think about where we were six, nine months ago. The it seemed like the Fed was fighting the economy. I totally agree, and I commented <clears throat> on your show as the layperson on the panel that that was my feeling about what was going on. I will concede that, and I think anybody being intellectually honest would have to admit it's a really tough job because you're looking to shepherd an economy. You don't want it, as you talk about Goldilocks thing, mm-hmm. of it not being too hot, not being too cold. You want to try to find that that beautiful room temperature, that perfect sort of sweet spot. But I thought they were aggressively raising rates way too fast. And now, now they have to hurry up and lower rates because they overcorrected. It's just they it's a shame they just went too far. You know, Harry, look, you've you've been you you have been doing your show for twenty seven seven years. Yeah. With you. Oh, thank you. Now we have talked about this for how many years? Twenty seven years. Okay. So <laughs> it's never gonna change. It's not it's it's not gonna change and you're not the, the I mean I'm not coming to the defense of the Fed in by any way, shape, or form, but the data points that they're fed, and you know they get so much information, and you have a body of people, individuals, um, making decisions that are going to impact all of us. I think about half of the rate increases were defendable, but they kept going and they kept going and kept going, and then after it was obvious that it was a mistake. The Fed chair actually doubled down with his language, and then that was a problem. But then, to his credit, and I don't know, in in fairness, the president smacked him around pretty good. So, actually. if you remember, we got to the fourth quarter, yeah. into the fourth quarter, and that's when and the you, president had had enough. Had, that's when you had the, what all, what you describe as a double down, and then they backed off in the first quarter. We had a spectacular four, first four months of the year. Yep, May, as we talked about, you know, down five, six, seven percent, and now we're back to June. And June looks to be pretty good so far. But again, I don't know. You Harry, said this, earlier this a, you expect multiple rate decreases. Well, I've in seen I have seen up I have seen indications, predictions up to three. Wow. So if you go that means if they go in they're not it sounds like they're not going in June. The first would be in July. So that means you have, you know, almost every meeting It's amazing some for the action. rest of the year. But but then again, you know, don't be surprised if if they reverse course, yeah, or, or they hold steady, I'm going to say they might make the first cut. Well, if they tease us about rate mm-hmm. rate decreases and then don't do it, well, well that's mar- not, markets mar- are not going to like the that. Markets will not like that, and that's the now the market- only reason that would be acceptable would be if the economy is just absolutely crushing it. Then there would be no reason, right? But we talked about GDP. Yeah. We talked about yeah. we talked about weak ma- weak manufacturing. So you know you you have a lot of headwinds here. Um, un, un, um, while the unemployment number, you know, posted 3.6 is unchanged, I think there's really more to that number it, than the number. I'm a layperson, so it's easy for me to say these words. You tell me if they're if they're acceptable or if you if you disagree, push back. The Fed, in my estimation, as a layperson, the Fed overcorrected, and now they're they put themselves in a position where they're racing. To fix their error, I don't think it's I don't think it's anything different that we have seen in the twenty seven years. Okay, okay. The, the, it always we always talk about the Goldilocks economy. Alan Greenspan, remember? Yeah. And you know, not I was too, never impressed. Not with too him. hot, not too cold. Yeah. But now all of a sudden, so you, now it's coined as something different. But I never would have believed that Janet Yellen would have been one of my favorite Fed chairs because she actually 
seem to shepherd well, in the think, correct way, yeah. and I didn't. I never expected it from so, her. So think about Johnny Yellen for a second. That's one of the topics I wanted to I wanted to mention here there today. You, you know, in September 2017, that's when you know she made the announcement that they're going to shrink the Fed's balance sheet, uh, having and by basically saying, look, when bonds mature, we're not going to reinvest the principal into newly issued bonds. We're going to hold that cash back. And, you know, and as a result of that, the, the, the Fed has reduced their balance sheet by $575 billion to $3.7 trillion. Now that, I mean, those are pretty astronomical numbers, but think about it. Is that good or bad? I think it's good, Harry. I, I mean, do you, don't, you don't want to have so much yeah. money out there that it's so readily available. And, you know, is the market, you know, are we getting the kind of performance with respect to GDP? Because the money's just sloshing around and it's available for anybody for anything. Chuck, we have four minutes, not even a little less than four minutes in your program. And I want to spend some quality time on Medicare. As you know, for about the past six months, we've been spending a lot of, well, on your show for, for years. But on this program, we've been spending a lot of time on Medicare because we partnered with Scott Hafitz. And a lot of our listeners that are nearing Medicare age that are Medicare recipients have been learning about their benefits and how things can change and so on. Uh, I know this is one of your agenda items, and we have an issue here, and it's going to continue to be an issue when you we, and I— We have we have a serious yeah. issue here, and I think it's been—unfortunately, it's been pretty much ignored. Uh, the average American worker who's going to retire next year— Will have, been, will have paid in 36000 in Medicare taxes over their working lifetime. Uh, the, the anticipated benefits that they will receive at, through retirement until they pass away is $230,000. That's now, a nice return on investment, Mr. Well, Malamut. Yeah, but, <laughs> it's but, not sustainable, but, the, but that's a very nice return on investment. Now, that, now Harry, that lifetime benefit is net of the Medicare premiums that are being paid by the retirees. So so what's happening, so now we have a, another potential situation. Use the word, situation. Crisis. crisis. Okay, crisis I mean, at hand. You know, we've talked about Social Security. We really, we've talked about college debt. You know, we really haven't spent any time talking about Medicare. And, and the fact of the matter is, that's a six to one return. I, I, Harry, I, th- I think you know you could put your shingle up and have a nice part-time job, you know, in, in doing that. But so how, the premiums how, are not going to cut it. No, the pre- think think about it. so you pay in thirty-six thousand in taxes, mm-hmm. and I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago that 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 was one of the taxes that was not that hasn't changed. I believe over, I, mean, I, don't know, I take that back. It might have been Social Security tax, yeah. one of the two. But having it, it doesn't really much matter. It I hasn't kept up with the, the reality. bottom line. Is thirty six thousand gets you two hundred thirty thousand in benefits, and you're. I mean, you'll and that includes what you pay in along the way while eight, you're eight retired. times six. It's well, it's a six to one return. Six but, to one. Uh, yeah. But even if it's That's three, even if it's three to one or two to one, or it's got to be even money. Yeah. And the, the the fact of the matter is, like, where is this money coming from, Harry? That's the point that I'm trying to make here. Closing comment. Um, one minute. So look, we we went we covered a lot of ground today. I'm I'm not I you know not trying to be Debbie Down. I'm just trying to be realistic. I mean, the, the ISM manufacturing data is weak. Unemployment number came in at seventy five thousand, below expectation. Uh, the ten the, the tensions remain with respect to the tariff negotiations. Um, the equity markets, you know, have done very very well in spite of all this. <coughs> um, I think you're going to have some volatility along the way until we can put China to bed and then hopefully see, you know, good Q2 earnings that will continue to move the market, hopefully, in the right direction. To reach Chuck Malamut, 609-383-2010, 609-383-2010. I needed Chuck yesterday three times. I called 609-383-2010. Thanks, as always, and we'll see you uh, not next uh, Tuesday. We will see you this Thursday. That's right. Yeah. Looking forward to Thank it, Thank you, Harry. Chuck. Thanks for everything. We'll be back. Appreciate your support. Early in the morning, WPG Talk Radio 95.5 and WPGTalkRadio.com. 
Health Update with Robin Stoloff, brought to you by Integrity Physical Therapy and the law offices of Richard A. Stoloff, Linwood and Philadelphia. What's one of the dirtiest objects in your home? If you said your kitchen sponge, you would be correct. A recent study in scientific reports suggests the kitchen sponge might be more of a health hazard than we thought. A kitchen sponge is the ideal breeding ground for bacteria, and some bacteria can resist cleaning and quickly grow and spread. Some of these bacteria could lead to serious infection, especially in people with compromised immune systems. Cleaning with very hot water in the dishwasher or in the microwave may help, but advice from many researchers is to throw away your sponge when it starts to get an odor and replace it with a new one. Also, don't use your sponge to clean up juice from raw meat, dirt from fruits and vegetables, or food debris. Brought to you by Integrity Physical Therapy with four locations. Put yourself in their hands. And by the law offices of Richard A. Stoloff. Attention you expect, results you deserve. What's your kind of fun? Is it award-winning dining and live music and frozen drinks at Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville and all the above? Find your fun at Resorts Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. More at resortsac.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Get in the game with the best sports book in AC this March Mania season. DraftKings Sportsbook at Resorts is the place to be all tournament long. Featuring exciting game day promotions plus food and drink specials, this season is sure to be a slam dunk. Stop by Resorts Casino Hotel today and place your bet. The Auto Plaza and English Creek. Roll with Mr. Tire. This is Harry Hurley, and I'm with the mayor, Charles Kane, owner and operator of the Auto Plaza at Harbor Township. Mayor, tell your listeners who are looking for a car, why should they choose the Auto Plaza? Harry, it's our full-service department selection and hassle-free financing alternatives that have set us apart for over 17 years. Over the years, we've been the recipient of many sales and service awards, as well as receiving an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. It's been a real honor for us. We are now serving a second generation of sales and service customers. Stop in today. You're going to love our staff and experience what makes us different. For all of your automobile service parts and sales needs, call the Auto Plaza at 609-646-2447. That's 609-646-2447. And visit us on the World Wide Web at myautoplaza.com. The Auto Plaza at English Creek. Roll with Mr. Tire. All right, welcome to F-150 Radio. Call from Georgia. Chad, what's shaking in making? I know the F-150 kicks butt and takes names. Like how the high-strength military-grade aluminum alloy F-150 thrashes the competition with best-in-class towing and torque? Mm-hmm, not surprised. Totally saw that coming. Chad, how do you know so much about F-150 beating the competition? I drive the competition. Got a <clears throat> ten-year lease. Kind of embarrassing, huh? Maybe I shouldn't advertise that fact on a national talk radio show. Good call. The Ford F-150, it doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. Best in class claims with properly configured vehicles. Class is full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds GVWR based on Ford segmentation. Now get a 2019 F-150 with 0% financing for 72 months, only at your Ford dealer. Not all buyers will qualify for Ford credit financing. 0% APR financing for 72 months at $1,389 per month for 1000 finance regardless of down payment. Program number 21040 on 2019 Ford F-150. Not available on Raptor. Residency restrictions apply. Take new retail delivery from an authorized Ford dealer stock by 7119. See dealer for qualifications and complete details. The following statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. Amber in trials tested mild to moderate symptoms. Testimonial is based on 90 days of use. Results may vary. IRI US Mulo, 52 weeks by UPC. Hi, I'm Mary Lou Retton, and I want to talk to you about something I haven't liked to talk about until now, my menopause. All my life, I've had energy, energy to win gold in 84. But when menopause hit me with the hot flashes and the night sweats, I began to feel sluggish every day. That all changed when I discovered Amberin. Amberin safely relieves 12 menopause symptoms by helping to restore your hormonal balance. Amberin is 100% drug-free, estrogen-free, and clinically tested. Amberin is America's number one menopause relief supplement. Thanks to Amberin, my fear of hot flashes is gone. My sheets aren't soaked every night, and my energy is back. Give Amberin a try and see what it can do for you. It works. It really works. Hurry to your Walmart, Walgreens, Target, and other fine retailers nationwide and get Amber in today. Hi, it's Mark Levin. Join me this evening at 6. Now back to Hurley in the Morning on WPG Talk Radio, 95.5 FM, 1450 AM. South Jersey's Talk Station. Thank you very much. Great one. A quick reminder, uh, we're filling in today. Music says we have to go, but I have time to tell you this. We're filling in today from 12 noon to 3 p.m. for Todd Starnes on all the Fox News Radio nationally syndicated platforms. So you can listen to foxnewsradio.com. 
You can listen at foxnation.com if you're a subscriber. You can listen on Sirius XM Satellite Radio, Channel 450. And we look forward to you uh, participating. And you can call in as well. We'll give you the phone number before the end of today's program. I, I have it nearby. I have it. You can call in at 888-788-9910. Uh, and we hope you will. We've had several uh, greater Atlantic City area phone calls uh, during the many times that we've been doing this. So that's where we'll be from noon to 3, back here tomorrow morning, of course, for the uh, Wednesday edition of Hurley in the Morning. And Thursday, we'll be live and direct from the Tropicana Casino Resort, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Friday, back here in studio. Normal programming. We'll be back. Bob Zlotnick is next. 95.5 FM and 1450 AM, WPGG Atlantic City, WENJ 97.3 HD3 Millville. Setting the stage for a legal fight. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. That's what House Democrats plan to do today. Continuing their investigation, President Trump calls a witch hunt. His press secretary, Sarah Sanders, told Fox. They don't get to redo something because they don't like the results. They didn't like the results of the election. Now they don't like the results of the Mueller report. But Democrats keep probing possible obstruction of justice and more. Fox's John Decker live at the White House. The resolution to be voted on today in the House would make it easier for Democrats